Okay, so this, this whole topic, the whole topic of building a very basic relationship in acting. So you're building the basic relationship is key. It's key. And there's several different ways to consider doing this that are solid, that absolutely work. And this isn't something that I'm discussing that is what works for me. I'm discussing what works for you. Possible things that can work to be able to build up relationships. Basic, basic relationships. Now, when I say basic, I'm sure that um, it's more advanced than what I, I actually think. I've been doing this a long time. It, it might look like some of these things are more advanced, but at the core, you can tune them down to where you're able to be able to believe. So you can find these believable qualities within another person that then builds up this imaginary world that you're about to enter into, which includes the relationship. So if we're looking at, like, um, uh, you could look at the script, whatever script, and you basically pinpoint, you, so when, you, when you're looking at the script, you basically pinpoint the ideas, the, the, the main things, the, the things that are triggering you, the things that are triggering the scene, the things that are actually causing some kind of unfolding to happen, something that when one thing happens, another thing unfolds, these are the kinds of things that you want to start to notice. So when you're reading the script, you're not looking at um, actions to take necessarily. You're looking at how the relationship is actually unfolding. What clues are the writer what clues are, is the writers actually giving to you about the relationships? Now this is part of how to work on these things. And there are two main things you can do. You can start to isolate those components. So you isolate those things that you get that are real to you, right? And you start to activate those and you start to stimulate that emotion within yourself, which has to do with the type of relationship. So if the type of relationship is um, something where somebody ridicules you, um, then that's something that you want to go and try and get, get actual real memory or some sort of, of um, real life stimulation, emotional stimulation of somebody ridiculing you. They, that's part of the relationship, if it's part of the relationship. If the relationship is a love relationship, then you want to start to find those things. And there's going to be, um, well, there, there, look for the videos that are on um, romance on how to build up romance. It's not what you think. It, it works so that you're able to open yourself up emotionally so that you can have this romantic encounter versus trying to implement a romantic encounter. Two very different things. Hi, can you do me a favor so I can do you a favor? I know a lot about acting and I need really good acting questions. Don't be nervous if they're not as good as they need to be. Just submit them. One comment per um, you know, entry. And, and then I'll be able to look at this, sort it out, and get back to you some really good solid acting answers that you can consider so that you can build your own acting technique. I don't want to affect it in any way that harms it. All I want to do is make sure that you have every single tool that you can in your actor's toolbox that you can then access yourself to be able to get those emotions and put those into your work, right into your imaginary circumstances. And it's the same thing for acting. When you're looking to, to work with relationships, you're looking to be able to have a relationship. You want to spark the relationship to unfold in real time. So you're, you're literally working to be able to identify keys that you can unlock 
just prior to your acting that can give you a real-time experience of that relation, of that relationship, of the, the give and the take of that relationship in the scene. You want it to unfold in real time. So there's, there's several different ways that you can do this. It's pretty interesting. Um, you can do a series of daydreams. Okay, we know that that's possible right now. Look, if you're in some sort of romantic encounter, you might want to just tell the person, listen, do you mind if I daydream about going on a date with you or doing this and doing that? That would be fine. But just be trying to be respectful because you, you need to be able to, you want to have the, the flares, you want to have the, the moments of, of intensity actually happen in your acting. You don't want to go out, um, go, go off and, and daydream and daydream, daydream and daydream, and then not have anything actually happen when you're actually doing the scene. That's that's the the point. The point is that you want to actually have the action of a real time event happening in real time. So if this is an element of romance, this is this is still key. It's still key. So times um, that you were in a relationship and you didn't want to be in a relationship is something that you want to start to include. Now, if, if you're lucky enough to know who it is that you're actually working with. Now, if you're auditioning, you don't. You might literally just know or meet the person right that moment, immediately, and then you'll be immediately working with them and acting with them. And this is why I think, although it's, a, it's an unconventional approach, you want to be able to look, do people watching, you want to be able to start to identify stuff without judging people, but you want to be able to find ingredients that you could find believable in other people. Now they don't have to be true, you just have to be able to find believable elements. So maybe you think that, you know, some uh, 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 high level crime person would be um, uh, looking like a like a big thug. I mean, it may not be true. I mean, they might be a white collar uh, criminal. They might be uh, somebody that replicates um, uh, another cryptocurrency. They might do um, whatever the case is. But the thing is, is that the thing you want to isolate is something that's believable to you, right? So you want to start to work with being able to identify traits in the other person that then you can start to be able to kind of expand in yourself build up. You want to build these things up. So it's particularly if you're working on a romantic encounter or you're working on some sort of romance happening or some uh, fluke thing and all of a sudden you're in a situation where there's a um, romance that catches you off guard or whatever the case is. That could, very, it's very, very common. It's a very common scene. You want to also, you want to also look at the times where you don't want that relationship. Now, here's why. You don't want to only prepare on what actually happens in the scene. You want to start to be able to have vivid daydreams. You want to start being able to activate things that relate to that piece of work. And you want to have multiple things activated within, within you. So, a lot of a lot of people, rightfully so, they they're they're in their own way of thinking, and I, I respect them terribly. And the thing is, is that a lot of people think that emotional preparation is only for the first moment. So they'll look at a script and they'll be like, well, you know, yeah, there's a relationship in this, but you know, I have a brother, sister, uh, cousin, aunt, whatever, um, um, uncle, um, uncle Joe, whatever. So the thing is, is that they'll say, well, they, they already know that, that's, that's it. They don't need to really go any deeper into that. They don't really need to go into the script deeper with that. Well, hold on. You want to build up chemistry in your acting. This is the whole thing. I mean, it's like, it's like a huge piece of the work. What do you do? And ask yourself, comment in the, in the comments section. It is, what do you do to stimulate an actual relationship? This is the same thing. You're working with something that has to activate. This isn't something that you're like, 
pretending. This isn't something where you know the belief of and you never have to do anything about that. No, no, no. If there's a specific relationship within the within the, the script, and there normally is at least one, sometimes there's three or four, in one, two pages of script for auditions. You want to look at this and you want to be able to go, okay, well, I know this, I know that, I know these things. Now, how do I activate it? How do I activate something that could build chemistry in your acting? Now look, it's called acting. I don't know, you could literally rename the entire acting genre, I'm being facetious, but you could literally rename the entire acting genre, activation. The, the point is, is that there's something that internally has to wake up inside of you. And then you're able to be able to look at it and live it out. You're able to interact with it. So relationships are exactly the same. You want to be able to interact with it. You've got to be able to isolate things in yourself that actually activate something in you. This isn't something that you want to just have a, a faint belief for. You want to actually activate something that's actually real. And or something that you've done emotional uh, daydreaming on, which is just as valid. Some people don't have aunts, uncles. Some people don't have mothers and fathers. And so what will they do? They have to be able to work on a relationship with a mother or father, which maybe they don't have. So they're going to have to find something and they're going to probably have to use daydreaming to be able to activate that element. So they activate that element of a mother or father figure. And they're activating their imagination, but because it's activating in them, all of a sudden something's actually worked. There's something that actually is there. Then when they start to interact, the mere action of doing, the mere action of involvement, of interaction, doing is interaction in acting. It's key. That's a very key, key, key thing I just said. Doing is interaction in acting. Then you, you literally have a situation where the doing of the action, of, of, of the interaction, spawns that emotional, e imaginary preparation to somebody that doesn't even have a parent. This is very confusing. Could you help me out to help you out? I mean, this is, <laughs> this is very odd, but the reality is, oh, all I'm asking is I'm asking for you to ask me really good acting questions. Really good acting questions. Now don't worry if they're not too good. Just submit what you have. Ask questions because you never know. I have studied so much and I'd be more than happy to tell you what I think you need to be able to know to unhinge the, the access that you need to be able to access your own talent. And all of a sudden, they're able to have this, this very real um, relationship with, with a, a, a mother or a father. And they're able to have it in real time, even if they don't have a parent in real life. So, there is, there is basically, there is the real stimulus which comes from really remembering real life. Then there is the emotional stimulus, which comes from daydreaming, from working in your imagination, in putting components together, which we'll do and find more work on that because I have more work on, on that, where you're working to be able to, to craft the art of daydreaming or craft the art of um, imagination. And the imagination sometimes, you know, uh, sometimes the imagination work can actually be more active and free in your acting work than the actual uh, real life work because the real life work sometimes comes with all this baggage and sometimes that baggage is fantastic for the work and sometimes that baggage holds back moments from unfolding in acting. So just be prepared for that. That's actually very, 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 very accurate. Now, look, look, I've seen well over 
And when I say well, over, I mean well over 30,000 acting exercises. I'm not coming from nowhere. I'm, not, I'm, I'm like, absolutely like, these are only some of my notes. Only some. So, uh, and I think it's been with like, oh, I don't know, I haven't counted. I think it's around 70 uh, teachers that I've studied under, or with, or, or, or studied. Um, which is huge, which is huge. So the last note I have here, you want to be able to identify things that embarrass you and that ridicule you in your work, in your, in your relationship, right? So if you're, if you're working at this element where you're supposed to have this like in awe moment of somebody or you're, you're working so that there's this whole construct of like a relationship, you're constructing this element that's, that's key to activate it. And then when you activate it, then you're going into the relationship with an active relationship. Just like what happens if you look at a brother or a sister or a um, whatever kind of relationship. If you look at the holidays and you watch people instantly when they see their relative. Or you look at the airport, you watch people uh, at the airport or you just are traveling through and there's nothing to do. So you just somebody and all of a sudden you look over and the two people haven't seen each other for a while and the spark happens in both of them. That spark that happens in both of them is something to notice and study. This is something that actually is literally what you're working to be able to do in acting. You're literally working to activate a spark so that when you see the person, the mere fact of even seeing them activates your emotional life and all of a sudden, oh my God, you like you're like good brothers, you're absolutely solid with each other. Right. Now, look, it may be that you don't have any brothers, but you're gonna have to do work to be able to come up with and study that element, study that relationship. And we're gonna be doing this on this channel right here and look for the information on uh, different relationships. I'm going to go right through. What does it mean to be this? What does it mean to be that? How does it work to be able to be in a relationship, in this kind of relationship, in that kind of relationship? And these are key, 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 key things. This is stuff that actors need to work on. This is separate than emotional preparation. This is a separate, you could even consider it to be, it's just almost like a separate, separate um, emotional preparation by itself. So you want to literally be in a place where you're like capable of having that element activate of a relationship in your acting and build up that relationship. Now there's been times, just so you know, because this is uh, another like kind of weird tip, is that the reality is, is that sometimes if you're doing this correctly, if you're really working on a relationship you might find that your fellow cast member and you become like really, really good close friends. And it might be that you literally develop a relationship like brothers. Don't worry about that. It's fine. As long as it doesn't harm either one of you, it's perfect. It's, it's, it's absolutely fine. It absolutely happens in acting where you'll be casted as um, uh, a certain role with a relationship role and then all of a sudden every single time you see that person it's, you know it's just their relationships right there it specifically happens with series with uh, with uh, television shows or different types of series and it, it, it's just normal you know don't give it too much mind don't don't think don't hide away from it don't think that it's abnormal that's completely absolutely normal to happen so and if you're working on a scene with somebody and you're working with on really hard to, to delve in, to dive into the relationship. That could absolutely happen. Now, one last note I will make is that if you're working on some kind of romantic thing, and you're working on some kind of like element where you're like working with romance, and you're obviously acting, you've got to be really clear about that. So you work, you might develop feelings of that kind of relationship, and then as everything goes in acting, and as I'm adamant about, and it, you can look in my book and you can see very detailed instructions on how to release emotion after you're acting. So you're, you're 
in a situation where you're building up a relationship, you build up that relationship, and then after you're acting, you, you want to let go of that relationship, completely let it go. And what will happen is that the next time you actually work to be able to build up, up a relationship, and you do some of these exercises to work up the build up relationships, all of a sudden you'll, one, build it up faster, and two, you'll be able to build it up stronger. And that's key. Absolutely, absolutely key. And uh, so work with being able to, one, be able to leap into your work, and this is also true with information and access ability with emotional preparation. So the, the, the point, the last point I will make, and then that's it, is that you want to absolutely activate the relationship and then separately activate the emotional preparation. So you're, you're activating one thing and then you're activating another thing and that's part of building actor's craft. And when you're building actor's craft, now all of a sudden you've got those two things. You're also carrying the weight of an actual real-time living relationship with your emotional preparation. And it gets very exciting because it gets very discoverable. You don't know what's going to happen fully. You're now involved in discovery in your acting in a real-time experience. If you would, boop the like button uh, and, and um, uh, share this with your friends, actually. That would be very helpful. And, and when I say helpful, it would be helpful to me. There's no question. I don't know how all these things work yet, and I don't care, honestly, about a lot of it. I just want the information now. And the thing is, but honestly, share the videos. Because when you share the videos, you can then have a discussion about the videos with your friends. Like, look, just say, clear up. Simon says that you're supposed to go and uh, work on a daydream to be able to go and have a relationship. Is that, is that nonsense or is it true? Ask your friends. So then, then ask them. Maybe uh, they only perform relationships. They try and pretend like they're the big brother or the big sister or whatever else, and they have some preconceptions about it. And the, the real-time experience that the writer's actually written is never in their work because they're never having a real-time experience. If so, then that's something for you to then consider and go, well, you know, your friend such and such thinks that it, it's not an important idea, but maybe you think that it is an important idea. Maybe it does work for you, and that's part of your own acting technique that you actually build up. So work with these things. Really, absolutely um, be diligent in acting, and let me know how I can help you with your acting. Ask me questions. Let me know how else I can actually fully explain any kind of questions or any kind of details. I got a ton, a ton of work that I've done over two decades, over two decades of, of acting work, of acting uh, experience, of, of literally studying my guts out over and over and over and doing uh, emotional preparations myself and over and over and over. So I might be able to answer your questions or help you out. Helping you find the emotions that I know that are there inside of yourself. Activate those and then be able to put those into your acting is what I am all about. I think it's fantastic. I think it's very, very interesting. And I think it's not being done enough in acting. So if you would, submit questions to me so I can actually help you to develop your own acting technique. Personalize your own acting technique so that you can have this journey as an experience within the imaginary circumstances that you leap yourself into. And then all of a sudden, you can have expanded, expanded, beautiful, absolutely emotionally rich exercises. And it's absolutely doable. You can fully, fully do it.